This is indeed the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. It's just another opportunity for us to come together and study just a little bit from the Word of God and to share just a few thoughts together on a Wednesday night, middle of the week. Uh, what a joy it is that God allows us the time and the opportunity to get together on Wednesday evenings and just have a word from the Lord. So as usual, we're going to be waiting for just a few moments for those who usually chime in to do so as we begin our lesson for tonight and for today. It is a gang that he has lengthened out the threads of our lives and allowed our golden moments to roll on for a while longer. And for that, we've come, if for no other purpose than to tell God, thank you for being so kind to us. Good to see those who are coming in tonight, Sister Joe McNeil, uh, Sister Whitaker, and Sister Chapman. Good to see you coming in, Sister Corrine Mitchell. Uh, what a day the Lord has given us to be alive. We're delighted out of all the men and women in the world that he woke us up and gave us another opportunity to get it right on tonight. So a uh, privilege to study from his book, to read his word, and to be involved in a study of that word on tonight. And so again, text tag, tell somebody that the Bible class hour is on, and there will be a quick word tonight from God's book, the Bible, uh, just to get us over from Wednesday until Sunday morning, when we'll hear another word from the Lord on this coming Sunday. In the meantime, we still have a number of people who are sick, who are shut in, struggling through with health. And so we're going to be calling their names tonight, praying for them, uh, that the Lord will do what only God can do and what he does best. Uh, for he can get us up off our sick beds and get us back into the place of worship again with nothing more than him saying it shall be done. So we'll be praying for that tonight. And God is a prayer answering God. Prayer changes things or prayer will change you. No doubt about it. We believe in the power of prayer. We are, many of us are here only because somebody's praying for us. Somebody prayed for us and somebody continues to pray for us every day of our lives. And so for that, we are grateful to the God of heaven. We're remembering tonight, as those who are coming in, we're still remembering. And if you have a need tonight, before I get into the sick list, uh, just write that need into, um, if you will, write that need into the uh, feed tonight, and I'll take the time tonight to remember you in our thoughts and prayers, uh, because again, prayers uh, together sent toward heaven changes things. And so again, if you have a need, a uh, special need for you or for some family member or friend, just write that need into the feed tonight, mention what that need is, and we'll take a moment tonight before lying down and go to God in prayer uh, for you and in your behalf. And when we pray, God hears us and things happen. God moves for us because we ask him to. So tonight, again, we're remembering Sister Joel Lassiter, uh, Brother Leonard Rogers. Uh, we're remembering uh, Sister Zena Vassar, uh, Brother William Easley, who continues to be on our sick list, one of our very faithful members. We're remembering him on tonight. Jennifer Noble, we're remembering you. Uh, we're remembering Sister Helen Brewer. Sister Brewer is one of our faithful members when she was able, been sick now for a while, had surgery. Uh, Sister Brewer, we're remembering you tonight. Uh, Sister Norma Mahone, still lifting her up in prayer. Uh, and of course, uh, those uh, Overly Williams family, we're still lifting them up in prayer. And so many others on this list who have lost loved ones. Remembering uh, my sister-in-law, Sister Brenda uh, Trice D. Priest, uh, as she'll be facing surgery on this coming Friday morning. We know God can and that God will. And so we're praying for her, uh, that God will continue to be with her. Uh, we're praying for uh, Connie Anderson. She was able to be in worship uh, last Sunday. So God has raised her up and allowed her to be back in the house of the Lord and uh, because of the prayers of the saints. And so we do that. Sister Robinson, Rose Robinson, we're remembering her. She's in the hospital tonight. Uh, remembering uh, a number of so many of our members who are sick and who are shut in may not have your name on the list tonight, may not have been given your name. Uh, Sister Ernestine Bryson, we're still remembering her. We want you to know that God is more than able, and he will do anything but fail. He can lift you higher, lift you off your bed of affliction, give you the strength you need to get up and get going again. And so tonight we're going to be praying that God will do what he does. We're also remembering the preacher in Haiti. I uh, spoke with him by way of text. He had to leave Haiti. He had to flee to the Dominican Republic 
because of the violence and all of the things that are going on, the unrest in Haiti now. It's unsafe to be there. Uh, we had to, uh, again, send some help for him uh, to be in the Dominican Republic for a time till it calms down in Haiti. So the church there is not able to worship uh, because of all the violence and the unrest. So pray for the Haitian uh, situation that God will move uh, and that things will work through and work out. Uh, because again, we want the saints of God in that area to be able to come together and lift their hands in praise and adoration to God. Uh, and so we want them to be able to do it freely. So pray for all of the situations that are going on right now in the country of Haiti, that God will be with them. And if again, you have a need, write it in the need. Let's pray right now. Lord, thank you. You are indeed an awesome God. There's no one beside you, no one above you. Lord, we come tonight to first of all say thank you for being God all by yourself, for all the things that you do for us every day of our lives, for the, for the care that you give to us, the attention you give to us, for the things you move out of our way every day of our lives, for the helping us to bear the difficulties of life, for Lord making a way for us because we know you are a way maker. We ask you now to be with all the names that I've called by means of this venue tonight, uh, be with them, help them, uh, touch them, touch their bodies, those who are sick, uh, bring them back to a portion of health. And Lord, if you'll just do that for us, what we'll find ourselves doing the rest of our lives is simply telling you thank you because you are such an awesome God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you in advance for the victory. Thank you in advance for the healing. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. Prayer changes things or prayer will change you. So if you don't have an effective prayer life, a life, then get to praying now and watch when you ask God, if God will not deliver, may not give you what you want when you want it, but the Lord will supply everything that you need because the Lord promised that he would be able to supply everything that we need according to his riches that are in glory. The Lord has everything that you need. There's a favorite passage of mine that I'm going to lift and use in a topical manner tonight and not exegete the passage, but use it to give a lesson for those that I've talked to a lot this week and hopefully it will be helpful to those going through some things tonight. It's found in John chapter 14 and verse number one, a passage that I use commonly when I'm dealing with those who've lost loved ones, those who are in distress, those who are struggling through life, those who have overwhelming difficulty, those who are facing something they don't know how to handle. This is a comforting, consoling passage uh, said by Jesus to the 12 apostles as he was getting ready to leave this world and go back to the Father. He'd already uh, let them know that the hour's death was coming. He let them know that he was not there to be with them always. He let them know that my time on earth is short. Uh, and I'm going to leave you someday and go back to the Father. And he says this to them uh, to comfort them, getting them ready for his departure and for his death. And John 14 and verse 1, he says this, Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. Let not your hearts be troubled. In other words, don't go through the rest of your days being upset by life. Don't let life and what's going to happen in life, don't let what's going to happen to me keep you upset for the rest of your days. Don't be troubled by conflict. <clears throat> don't be surprised by disaster. Don't let that cause you to stop in your tracks because you're having some storms or difficulty in your life. And I talked to a number of folks just this week who are dealing with a number of problems and difficulties every week. Uh, I have someone who call and say, pray with me or pray for me. Every week I have someone who's saying, take me to the Lord in prayer. Somebody who say, preacher, lift me up tonight because I'm dealing with some stuff. Somebody every week calls me and want to pray together, want me to pray for them. And this week has been one of those weeks when so much is going on in the brotherhood. So much is going on with our churches. So much is going on with our fellowship. So much is going on with our nation. So much is going on with the world and all that is going on in it that we need to take time to understand 
what it is to pray, number one, and number two, what it is to deal with life when life gets tough. So if I were to give uh, this a subject tonight, it is how to deal with life when life gets rough, when life gets tough. Steps to deal with life when life gets tough. How to deal with life when life gets tough. Any one of those subjects uh, and not let it trouble your heart. When the difficult days come, when life is troubling you, what do I do? How do I get through my days? Sometimes it's by you're by yourself. Sometimes there is no there is no husband, there is no wife, there are no children, uh, there are no parents. It's just you. It's just you trying to find your way through, your way trying to handle the things that come your way in life. So what do I do, Brother Blake, with all of the, the things that happen in life? Because it seems like time I get through with one thing and I think I'm about to breathe, then something else comes my way. Does that describe anybody in the feed tonight? Does that describe your life to some degree by the time you think that you're about to rest yourself for just a moment? It looks like something else comes up you got to deal with, you got to handle. Uh, and sometimes it's, it's just it's just rough on you. Sometimes it's tough on you because there's nobody there but just you. And sometimes there are folks there, but they don't know how to help. They don't know what to do. Then what do you do, preacher? What do you do? How do you handle it? when you're wrestling so constantly with health or you're dealing with financial problems or you're dealing with uh, family difficulty that is, is bombarding you or you're dealing with a job situation or something is happening with you, how do you handle it? Uh, how do you get through it? What do you do? As with me and others who have recently, as I mentioned last week, lost loved ones, as we are challenged, uh, to go through life now without a mom or a dad or a relative? How do you then face those kinds of realities? Uh, how do you make it every day? How do you get through every day without crying and without being depressed and being overwhelmed? I want to suggest some things to you. It may not want to take all of them, but some of them hopefully will help you tonight that I'm going to suggest to you. Try it. It just might get you through. As I suggest four or five things to you, to help you deal with the realities of this world and the trouble of this world. Number one, what I want you to do is to build a relationship with God. I don't mean just through telling God about your problems, but building a relationship with God involves more than at night before you go to sleep, telling God all about what you need and how you're hurting, even though that's fine, do that with God. I mean, build a personal relationship with him. Uh, I don't just talk to God uh, on mornings and night. I don't just talk to God uh, before I sit down to eat a meal or before I get ready for a long trip. I don't just talk to God in the moment of something happening. I have an ongoing conversation with God off and on throughout the day. Uh, I may talk to him as if I'm talking to somebody in the passenger seat. Uh, I may be communicating with him. Folk may look at you strange. They may think uh, you're about to lose what's up here, but you know who you're talking to. I've developed a talking relationship with him about anything and everything. Uh, and I interact with God throughout the entirety of my day. Lord, you know my thoughts. Lord, help me to deal with this. Lord, I got a meeting. I want to be able to have, I'll talk to him all the way through the entirety of the day. Uh, and I am developing through my conversation, not just a I need conversation or a I want conversation. You can always tell God what you need and what you want. Nothing wrong with that. But developing a talk relationship with him where you communicate with him uh, and he communicates back through his word with you. Uh, develop a relationship with God. Second Peter 3, verse number 18, but grow, look at this, grow in the grace and the knowledge of our Lord, Savior Jesus Christ. Paul said it this way. He said that I may know him. I want to really know Jesus. I want to experience him in totality. Uh, he's a comfort when you're walking. He's a comfort when you lie down. He's a consoler when you need consoling. 
He is a confidant who don't tell anybody your business. He is a healer. He's a doctor. He's a lawyer. He's a friend. He's a counselor. He's all of those all wrapped up in one. And so daily, I put my cares on him. I put all of my burdens on him because his shoulders are big enough to carry my hurt, to carry my anger, to carry my frustrations, to carry my anxiety. I can put it all on him by talking with him and giving all of the things over to him. God and I know each other. He knows all about me, but the Lord knows I'm learning daily more about him. I'm developing that personal relationship and intimacy with the Lord that I know that we feel as we walk together day by day, as we live in this present world, as we live in this world of shootings and violence and crime and lying and political unrest. So if we live in this world, we need to be consoled by knowing that God and I know each other, that I'm developing a better relationship with him. Now, how do you do it? Through prayer and a study of his word. <clears throat> how do you build that relationship? Through prayer and a study of his word. Those are two of the best ways to build that personal relationship. Prayer, study. Meditation is involved in the middle of that. Meditate on his word both day and night. In other words, let God's word sink into your mind, your heart, and your spirit. And he speaks to you every day when you need to be spoken to. Uh, when, you, when, you're, when, you're, when you're disturbed, I can read Psalms where it says, don't be disturbed or fret not yourself about other men matters. When it seems like you're not going to succeed in life because it's one thing after another, it says, I will supply all of your needs according to my riches and glory. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. He said, trust me. Don't walk past me when you need something. Walk to me. Come towards me when you're in need and watch me deliver. I've delivered over and over again in the past. I will do it again now. So the first thing you do, if you're having some issues tonight, if your life is just spinning out of control, you need to get it back in control, try number one, to daily build your relationship with God and watch God get closer to you as you get closer to him. Number two, uh, trust God in everything, including the little things. Trust God in everything, including the little things. See, some little things we try to do ourselves as opposed to depending on God to do it for us. Whenever you start taking matters into your own hand without asking God first, get ready. We will mess it up every time. I don't care how small, how minute the situation is. I pray about everything and anything. Uh, and then what you do is I trust God. I literally trust God. And I take those things to him. Proverbs 3, 5, you know it. I've quoted it a number of times. Quoted again tonight, Proverbs 3, 5 uh, through verse number 8. Trust what? In the Lord. How? With all of your might. And do what? And lean not on your own understanding, but in all of your ways acknowledge who? Him. And what will he do when you acknowledge him? He will direct your steps. Who will direct your steps? God will always direct your step when you trust him with everything, including the little things in your life. We want to give God sometimes the big things. So, oh God, I handle the rest. Give it all to the Lord and watch him handle what you are unable to handle. All right, number three. Examine your thinking. Uh, every day, I try and focus my mind on the spiritual things in life. It's so hard to do sometimes because I'm bombarded every day with the carnal things. You know, how am I going to eat? How am I going to pay my bills? How am I going to continue to keep clothing and keep a car payment made? How am I going to handle my kids or my grandkids? How am I going to deal with all of this that's coming up this week? 
uh, I got this, I got that. And if we're not careful, we will let all of the carnal and the worldly things crowd the Lord out. I need to get this job. I need to get this pay raise. I need to get this check. I need to do his. I need to do that. And if we focus on that every day, then we really, really don't allow God the place in our lives that he needs to have. you got to learn that when you get up, make a mental decision when you roll out of the bed in the morning. Make a prayer talk with God. Talk with God when you first get up and talk with him as if he's sitting next to you. And tell him, Lord, I need you today to move out of my way what I cannot handle. I need you, Lord, if it's in my way and you don't move it to help me to get across it. Help me get through it. I know there's nothing you can't do. I'm just depending on you. And then put that in your psyche. Put that in your mind that anything that's going to happen today, God and I can get through it. I look at my thinking. What the Bible says in Philippians, it tells you how to think. You've heard it before. Say it again. Philippians chapter 4 and verse number 8. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, Whatsoever things are noble, whatsoever things are right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if there is any excellent or praiseworthy thing, think on these things. Think on what? Whatever is good, whatever is right, whatever is noble, whatever is pure in God's sight, focus your mind so your mind don't only see the carnal things or the worldly things, but it will also see the spiritual things. Number one, how you do that? I'm breathing. Who gives me air? God. Number two, I have something in the refrigerator to eat. How do you have that? God. Focusing on the spiritual things and the great things in life. Uh, I have some place to sleep and some place to lie down at night to put my head on a pillow. It's called a house. How did I get it? God. I have a car when I need to move and go about the city. And I'm going to let the carnal things crowd all this out. Now, these are blessings. I got a car to get about. How did I get it? God. I got just enough health to be able to take care of myself. And I'm not in a nursing home, retirement center. I'm not in the hospital. I'm not on chemo. I'm not on whatever. And even if I am, God is still keeping me. God. If I'm going through chemotherapy, if I'm having chemotherapy at this hour and I got to go back tomorrow for some more chemo, God is still keeping me. How did you afford the chemo? How did the insurance come about? God is in every detail of your life. Every iota of your life, God is in the detail. You wouldn't be where you are and doing what you're doing now if it was not for the involvement of God in your life. Take yourself out of the equation. Reevaluate your thinking. I try and think in a spiritual vein every day. Yes, the world crowds it out. Yes, the word will crowd in and it will make you think that everything is bad and you don't see anything's good. All your debt is so heavy. All of your, your friends or this or your whatever. It'll make you believe you're all by yourself. But I stopped by long enough to tell you, God is ever standing by. Change your thinking, and it'll change your results. It all starts with you changing your thinking. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Anyhow. Well, as we're ready to close on you tonight, understand then that God is involved in the struggle. If the struggle is real, and you're still getting through the struggle, you're not getting through the struggle because you're strong or because you're smart. You're now smart in all the things that are happening. It ain't because you're intelligent and you got four degrees. It's because God is getting you through your struggle. Every struggle I've had in the last several years, I would not have made it through those struggles were it not for God. Were it not for me leaning and depending on him. My faith has sustained me through all of my losses, through all of my difficulty. God has continued to strengthen my faith. And by faith, I walk by it every day. I walk by faith and not by sight. And so I'm still here. I'm still moving. I'm still doing what I do. 
I'm still able to do, I'm still inhaling, exhaling. Why? Because God is in the struggle. I don't struggle by myself. I don't struggle in this fight by myself. God is enabling me every day to put one foot in front of the other. He gives me enough strength and enough intellect to be able to figure some things out because God is giving me my right mind, clothed me in my right mind, and gives me every day a reasonable portion of my health and strength. I have just enough strength. I can dress myself, feed myself, drive myself, tend to all of the things that I need. How is that possible? Because God is in the struggle. You're not struggling by yourself. Stop thinking that. Understand that if God wasn't in it, you wouldn't be here. And the struggle is real because so much of life is a struggle. Remember, 1 Peter 5 and verse number 7 says this, give your worries and your cares to God. Give them to God. To whom? Give your worries and your cares of this life, the struggle, give them to God. Why? Because he cares for you. I'm giving God the problems. I'm giving God the difficulty. Why? Because God cares about me. And he can take all of my trouble, all of my problems into his into his little finger, and he can move anything out of the way. That's why I'm putting my cares and my fears and my anxieties in his hand. And then as I close tonight, remember that God took care of you yesterday. And if God took care of you yesterday, don't you think he has enough sense to take care of you again today? Hmm? If you relied on him yesterday, if every breath you took in your body, God gave you air, made your lungs work yesterday, why would you think he wouldn't give you air and let them work again today? I trust God more today because of what he did for me yesterday, day before yesterday. He just keeps on making a way because it's his nature to keep on making a way. He keeps on allowing me to get up, keeps on allowing me to be able to dress myself, feed myself. He keeps on allowing me to be able to do for myself. And for that, I come tonight, if for no other purpose than to tell God, thank you. Is there anybody in the feed tonight that got a thank you on your lips? Instead of complaining tonight about what you don't have, can you thank God as I close about what you do have? You've been driving all day. He kept you safe. He moved death off the corner that was waiting on you. He allowed you to have enough gas to put in these cars that you drive. You are able to do what you do today. Can you have enough in you right now just to tell God, thank you and not complain about what tomorrow may bring, but thankful for what the day already has given. Praise God anyhow. He's an awesome God. And I come tonight to remind you of the awesomeness of my master. Remember God has been faithful in the past. Read Psalm 77 when you have the time tonight. Remember the deeds of the Lord. Remember what he's done. And I start by to tell you, he keeps on doing it. He not only has done it, there ought to be a witness tonight that say he keeps on doing it. Well, Brother Blake, I'm having to walk with a cane. Or are you still walking? Brother Blakeney, I'm having to be in a wheelchair. Are you still rolling? Brother Blakeney, I'm I struggle, so struggle to pay the rent. Are you still in a house? Brother Blakeney, my children don't come by to see me. Are you still able to make it if they don't come by? Instead of complaining tonight, spend the rest of the night thanking God, not for who died, but who's still alive. Because you may have lost some loved ones, but you still got some loved ones still alive. Thank God for them. Lord, thank you. You are such an awesome God. For every good deed you do, I acknowledge it. I realize that every good and perfect gift come down from above. You're in my struggle tonight. As I struggle in life, as I deal with my realities of life, 
getting older and dealing with the olderness, uh, the older feelings that you have and the anxieties and the pains of getting that. Lord, you're in the struggle tonight. For our young listeners who are dealing with raising kids and dealing with jobs and who are trying to find their way, you're in the struggle tonight. For middle-agers who are trying now to group for the old age time, you're in the struggle tonight. Help all of us to know that when we struggle, we're not struggling by ourselves, that you're right in the middle of everything that's happening in our lives. We love you and thank you for the victory. In the holy, tender, sweet, strong name of Jesus, my Savior, I ask all of these things and every heart that agreed said, amen. If you will tonight, and this lesson has been somewhat helpful to you at all, reach down now and press the share button so that perhaps this lesson can fall into the hands of someone who needs this message to get them across uh, the rest of the week. You never know what people are going through. You can't look at me and tell what's happening with me because I may never tell you what's happening, but God knows. So press this lesson on, press the share button so someone I uh, can hear the message for tonight. I want you to tune in with us this coming Sunday at 10 o'clock. Uh, and there'll be a powerful word coming from the pulpit on this coming Sunday. And Brother Malcolm Hines will be back in place. He'll be leading us to the throne of God in song. We are looking forward to having a simply wonderful time in the Lord. Look forward to seeing you virtually on this coming Sunday. Or if you're in the city, Stop by and let's worship together. May the Lord hold you in the hollow of his hand and give you peace until this time next week.